In this video, I want to talk about applications of logarithms. There are several common equations that natively contain logarithms. Almost all of them deal with the concept of comparing quantities that change a great deal in magnitude. The first one is pH. pH measures the acidity of a solution and is given by the equation pH equals, and that's lowercase p, capital H, equals negative log and then a bracket. The reason it's a bracket is because in chemistry uh, we use brackets to denote concentration. And so it would normally be a parentheses. A bracket is just a form of parentheses. It's the way this equation is written. Anyways, let me start over again. pH equals negative log left bracket capital H plus in the exponent right bracket. In layman's terms, pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So H plus in brackets is the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution, which is measured in moles per liter. A pH of seven is neutral. I thought I'd give you a sense for what these numbers actually mean in terms of scale in a little table of values. We have four columns. In the first two columns, I've written the hydrogen ion concentration. That's left bracket H plus right bracket in moles per liter. I've written it in two ways. The first way is as a decimal and the second way in scientific notation. Then in the third column, we have pH, like what is the actual pH value? And what does that mean in words? So here we go. On the first line, if the hydrogen concentration is 0 0.001 moles per liter or one times 10 to the negative third in scientific notation, the pH is three. And that's a very acidic solution something like stomach acid maybe. If the hydrogen concentration is 0 0.00001 or one times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter, then the pH is five, which is acidic, but not as acidic as stomach acid. In the third line, we have a hydrogen concentration of 0 0.00001 moles per liter or one times 10 to the negative seventh in scientific notation. This is a pH of seven, and this is neutral. This is like the pH of water. On the next line, we have 0 0.000000001, or one times 10 to the negative ninth. That's a pH of nine. It's a somewhat alkaline solution, but not super alkaline. Finally, we have a hydrogen ion concentration of 0 0.000000001 moles per liter or one times 10 to the negative 11th. That's a pH of 11, and that's very alkaline. Now you can imagine that if we just had a scale that went from 0.001 to 0.000000000001, this would be very hard to graph, and it would be very hard to talk about. So the negative log actually transforms those very, very tiny numbers to a numerical pH that is easy for us to talk about. Notice that written in scientific notation, it's much easier to see the connection between the power on the 10 and the pH. The Richter scale, which is used in earthquakes, is also measured using logarithms. The Richter scale was designed with two principles in mind. First, each change of 1.0 on the scale should be 10 times greater in earthquake force than the previous value of the scale. So a magnitude five earthquake should be 10 times greater than a magnitude four earthquake. Second, an earthquake with a magnitude of zero should actually be undetectable for humans. And it turns out that both a magnitude of zero and one are, are pretty much not felt by humans. The formula for the magnitude of an earthquake using the Richter scale is capital M equals log of A. So log left paren A, right paren. The A is a capital A where we measure the maximum amplified ground motion, capital A, in microns. Now note, a micron is a millionth of a meter. Again, I've made a little table of values to give you some sense of what this scale actually means. In the first two columns, we have the movement of the Earth in microns, either as a whole number or in scientific notation. The third column is the magnitude of the earthquake, and the fourth column is the description of it. So for example, a magnitude one, or one times 10 to the zero, is a magnitude of zero on the Richter scale, and it's not felt. A movement of 10 microns, or one times 10 to the first, is a magnitude one earthquake, and is also not really felt by humans. A movement of the Earth of 100 microns, which is one times 10 to the second, is a magnitude two earthquake, and is minor. 
a movement of 1,000 microns, or 1 times 10 to the third, is a magnitude 3 earthquake, also minor. 10,000 microns, or 1 times 10 to the fourth, is a magnitude 4, which is a small earthquake. Also a small earthquake is 100,000, or 1 times 10 to the fifth, of magnitude 5. A moderate earthquake is from 1 million microns of movement, or 1 times 10 to the sixth, that's a magnitude 6. A strong earthquake is 10 million microns of movement, 1 times 10 to the seventh, and that's a magnitude 7 earthquake. And finally, a great earthquake is 1 billion microns of movement, 1 times 10 to the ninth, and that's a magnitude 9. Not sure why I skipped 8 there, but we'll go on. Graphing either the pH scale or the Richter scale in Desmos is very challenging because of the wildly varying input values. Let's just graph the earthquake function and see how well we do. So we're going to graph m equals log of capital A in Desmos. If we graph this in a standard viewing window, we see a logarithmic function. It has a vertical asymptote on the y-axis, and it's gradually growing. But in a standard viewing window, and let's just look from 0 to 10 for the Richter scale on the y-axis, and maybe like from 0 to 15 on the x-axis, if that's all we look at, we actually can't see any values of the Richter scale above 1.2 on this graph. So 1.2 is right around uh, 15 microns of movement. So we're not getting a very good view of the scale. Now Utah experienced a magnitude 3.7 earthquake in February of 2019, that's where I live. And look how far we have to zoom on the x-axis to see a magnitude 3.7 earthquake. We have to go all the way to 5,012 to see that 3.7 magnitude earthquake. We haven't altered the y-axis at all, but that's a huge zoom on the x-axis. And now the values from like 0 to 15 are completely washed out for microns of movement. This is the problem with these scales that involve magnitudes of 10. And this is why we use logs to take those scales down in size a little bit. Now I have a little tip for you in Desmos to make this a little bit easier. Let's go over to Desmos and I'll show you. I have the magnitude of the earthquake graphed, m equals log of a, and I've got the Richter scale on my y-axis. I'd like to zoom way, way in on the x-axis without affecting the y-axis at all. And you can do this with a keyboard. You can either do it, of course, in that wrench menu we always talk about, but another way to do it is to press down the shift button and hover over the axis. As soon as you press down shift and you get near that axis, you'll see a left-right arrow appear, and then you can click and drag it to change that one axis without affecting the other. So again, we click and drag. There we go. So you can see we can zoom in quite a ways without affecting the y-axis. All right, I have a couple questions for you to try. Let's see if you have the hang of these two applications around pH and Richter scale. Pause the video and give these a try. Okay, we're back. Let's start by calculating the pH of blood if the concentration of hydrogen ions is 4 times 10 to the negative 8th moles per liter. We know the pH equation is lowercase p capital H equals negative log left bracket capital H plus right bracket. In this case, we know the concentration of hydrogen ions. So let's rewrite this. Lowercase p capital H equals negative log of left parentheses 4 times 10 to the negative 8th right parentheses. Now you can put this into Desmos, negative log 4 times 10, and then we'll use the a to the b key, negative 8. This gives us a value of 7.3979, or I'm going to round to 7.4. The pH of blood is around 7.4. Next problem. On November 30th, 2018, there was a magnitude 7.1 earthquake centered about 10 miles north of Anchorage, Alaska. Let's find the maximum amplified ground motion in microns. So in this case, we have the capital M value, the magnitude, and we want to find the capital A value. The formula is capital M equals log left paren capital A right paren. So we have 7.1 equals log of capital A. Now, how do we solve a log equation like this? Well, the base on the log is a base 10, right? So we want to raise both sides into the exponent of 10. We would write 10 to the something on the left 
and 10 to the something on the right. That something is a set of open and closed parentheses with space in between. So on the left, that's 10 to the 7.1. And on the right, that's 10 to the log of a. Well, now I have a base that's 10 and a log that has a base of 10. So on the right side of the equation, that should simplify to just be capital A. Now we have 10 to the 7.1 power equals capital A. And we just need to calculate 10 to the 7.1 power, which is 12,589,254 microns. That is the maximum amplified ground motion. For the third problem, we're being given that the pH of stomach acid is between 1.5 and 3.5. We want to find the range of the concentration of hydrogen that corresponds to this pH range of 1.5 to 3.5. Let's just start by rewriting the pH equation. Lowercase p capital H equals negative log left bracket capital H plus right bracket. In this case, we have the pH. We want to find the concentration of hydrogen ions. Let's start with a pH of 1.5. 1.5 equals negative log left bracket capital H plus right bracket. Now, usually when we do the 10 to the on both sides to solve a log equation, we only have a log. We don't have something in front of the log like this negative. That's simple enough to fix. Let's just divide both sides by negative 1. That moves the negative to the left side. 1.5 divided by negative 1 gives us negative 1.5 equals positive log left bracket h plus right bracket. Okay, now we know that this is a log base 10. We're going to use 10 to the something on the left and 10 to the something on the right as our inverse. So 10 to the negative 1.5 on the left and 10 to the log of left bracket h plus right bracket on the right. On the right, we have 10 to the, so a base of 10, and log, which is also a base of 10. So that should simplify to just be left bracket, capital H plus right bracket on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we'll have 10 to the negative 1.5. Well, I should be able to calculate 10 to the negative 1.5. That is 0 0.0316 for the concentration of hydrogen ions. And that's in moles, M-O-L, slash capital L, so moles per liter. So now we've found the hydrogen ion concentration that corresponds to 1.5. We still need to find the hydrogen ion concentration that corresponds to 3.5. Well, if you just follow this formula through, let's look at where that 1.5 shows up shows up as 1.5 equals negative log of H plus, and then negative 1.5 equals positive log of H plus, and then 10 to the negative 1.5 on the left-hand side, and that's what we end up evaluating for our answer. So I think we can just do 10 to the negative 3.5 to find the other side of the range. And 10 to the negative 3.5 is 0 0.0003 moles per liter. So the range of concentration of hydrogen ion for stomach acid would be between, I'm going to write this as an inequality, so I'm going to put bracket capital H plus, close the bracket in the middle, and I'm going to put a less than or equal to on each side. The bottom number is actually the 0 0.0003 moles per liter, and the top number is 0 0.0316 moles per liter. The concentration of hydrogen ions has to be between 0 0.0003 moles per liter and 0 0.0316 moles per liter.